Did you know that at one point in time potatoes were evil? And that they gave you a disease that could only be cured by the touch of a member of the royal family? Well, welcome to the show, everyone. Well, I'm sure now everyone's question on their mind is, uh, well, what the hell am I actually talking about? That doesn't make any sense. Potatoes are loved. Everyone loves potatoes. The Irish, their entire thing is potatoes, right? Potatoes are everywhere. What's not to love? They're absolutely amazing. Well, at one point in time, people actually, uh, kind of hated them. Like, really hated them. A lot. Or you see, the potato got a really late start in Europe. It didn't really arrive until the late 1500s, even going as far as 1600 for France. I mean, Britain, 1585, Belgium and Germany, 1587, Austria, 1588, and Ireland in 1589. And as I said before, France in 1600. The, you see, the local populations, they really looked at the potato as something absolutely unneeded. It was weird. It was poisonous. I mean, if you know the potato, then really only the roots of the plant are something that are actually edible, which is something that was unheard of in Europe. That's just, that, that didn't make sense. And so they looked at this plant and they thought, oh my god, this thing is evil. And so the early days, people thought that potatoes caused a whole variety of diseases, which I'm actually going to read for you here. We have leprosy, syphilis, early death, honestly, so specific. Their brilliance was utterly astounding. Sterility, rampant. Sexuality. So in other words, it made you both sterile, but simultaneously made you rampantly sexually active. Potatoes were birth control. Narcosis, destroying the soil where it was planted, and the subject of today's video, scrofula. Now I'm sure a bunch of you don't really understand what scrofula is, so let me explain. This is a condition in which the bacteria that causes tuberculosis would also cause symptoms outside the lungs. And this usually would take the form of something like inflamed and irritated lymph nodes, like in your neck. And so doctors called scrofula cervical tuberculosis lymphonditis. Cervical in this case actually refers to the neck, not what you're thinking of, you dirty, dirty people. And so statistically, scrofula is actually the most common kind of tuberculosis infection that you would get outside of the lungs. And historically, scrofula was something that was called the king's evil. And the reason for this, as stated before, is that until the 18th century, doctors genuinely thought that the only way to cure this disease was to be touched by a member of the royal family. I can only imagine how many peasants did not get scrofula because they were getting touched by the king. Ah. And so it was widely believed for literally centuries that the royal houses of England and France had a supernatural gift to cure people that had scrofula by simply touching the sufferers. Like, okay, we got Clovis of France and Edward the Confessor of England. These two guys were believed to be the first kings that were actually endowed with this particular gift for their respective countries. The formal practice of the ceremonial rite could be traced all the way back to the reigns of St. Louis in France and Edward III in England. So Edward III was actually the first English king to order this public display of the right, you know, rather than something that you might do privately in the bedroom. <laughs> and so he used this medallion called a touch piece, and this touch piece was given to the sufferers as a kind of talisman against evil. Initially, the ceremony only consisted of the king washing the diseased flesh with water, but Henry VII discontinued that and made it more complex, making the ceremony instead the process of the king touching the afflicted subject, with the court chaplain reciting prayers over it and presenting the touch piece, which was usually something that was suspended by this silk ribbon that was around their neck. Edward I reportedly touched 533 of his subjects in the first month. Philip VI of Valois touched 1,500 in a single ceremony. Charles II, according to the registry, touched 92,102 people during his 22-year reign. At times, 600 in one ceremony. Louis XVI, who was soon to meet the guillotine, was anointed at his coronation with the holy oil of Clovis on June 11, 1775. And so three days later, in the summer, he ritually touched 2,400 stinking sufferers of scrofula. Which brings us to our final king, William III of England, who was the last person to perform the ceremony with a single performance and said, and I quote, God give you better health and more sense. He then refused to touch the patients. And that, my friends, is why the potato gave you a disease that only the king could cure. Thank you for watching, and let me know what it is that you want to see on the next one. Bye, guys.